Can you imagine? Everything you've worked for the last 10 years, all of a sudden, it's gone. And in the back of your mind, you've got Satan saying, David, it's your fault. You've been living away from God. You've been living here and, and tricking the enemy. You've got, you've got your men who at one time would have given their life for you. And all of a sudden, you look around and you see them and they're murmuring and they're, murmuring and they're, they're picking up stones. Can you imagine what David was going through at that time? There have been some low times in my life. I'm sure there's been some low times in your life. This verse has come to me more and more and more. And every time I gain new insights, wouldn't you love to know how David strengthened himself in the Lord? Wouldn't you know that secret prayer that he prayed? What happened that caused him to all of a sudden when when most men would have folded, when most men would have fallen down and said, go ahead, I deserve it. Wouldn't you love to know what he said? He said, Wyatt, Hazag, Yahweh, Elohim. Hazag. It means to strengthen. It means courageous. It means almost a supernatural strength that gives you the ability to overpower. He said, Hasak. He Hasaked himself in the Lord God. It's the same word that when Moses was was giving up control of of those three million Jews and said, Joshua, they're yours now, buddy. He said, Hasak yourself. Encourage yourself. Be strong in the Lord. And then in Joshua 1, when God was speaking to to Joshua, and God knew the the task ahead of him, three or four times he said, Hasak yourself. Encourage yourself. Strengthen yourself. 2 Chronicles 16, 9, a verse that God has given me a long time ago. It's a life verse. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself Hasak. On your behalf. You want God strong on your behalf? Desire. Desire Sedeca. It's the same verse that in Isaiah 42, the same word. A prophetic chapter where God says, Behold my servant. And he's talking about Jesus Christ. And he says in Isaiah 42, 6. He says, I will sock your hand. He said that to his son. And I know most of us think that when he was there in the garden, God was turning away from him. When he was there on the cross, God was turning away from him. He couldn't look upon him because of the sin, even though the Bible says that God beholds the evil and the good. I know from God's word, that Jesus didn't face that alone. Jesus didn't go into that garden alone. Jesus didn't face the sins of the world alone. Jesus didn't face the pain of the crucifixion alone because God said, I will sock your hand. He was holding His hand the whole way. How did David, when most men would have fallen, how did God, David lift up his hand and say, God, a sock my hand, strengthen me. Psalm 63, written while he was hiding in the wilderness, he said, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Did you know, when we face Ziklag moments, even if it's because we deserve it, because we've had a bad attitude, we've been hard, we've been rebellious, even when you face those moments, if you respond to the said, 
to the mishpat and the sedekah of God, God will take your hand and he will hasak it. He will strengthen it. When you fix your heart upon the covenant-keeping God and realize that His Son made a covenant with you and that by faith you've entered into that covenant and that covenant says that you'll always have His unfailing love if you just come to Him and confess your sins. It's there. And when you appeal to God to establish His justice in your heart over your enemies, you say, God, I want my house to be right. I want my attitude to be right. I want to be not in my own strength. I want to be in your strength. He'll make it right. And when you say, God, I need to rely upon you totally for strength, for righteousness, you're my only hope. God will reach your hand. You see, here's the problem. If you go to the next slide, there's a little thing. We have ziklag moments. If we respond to his has said, and we say, God, you're here in this. God, you're here. Forgive me. Search my heart. I know your love is toward me. But if you stiffen your back and say, God, you're not here. How could you do this? You, you're, you're just judging me. I, I deserve this. If you pull away, you'll fail. Or as far as his justice, if you humble yourself and say, God, forgive me. I've not been following your word. I've not been allowing your justice in my life or you can harden your heart and you say well this isn't right God I don't deserve this this shouldn't be that they shouldn't do that God you have no right to do this over my life you'll fall back or if you You come to him and say, God, I need your righteousness. I can't do this on my own. I have no strength. You can can draw back and you can say, well, I'm going to rely on this. I'm going to rely on that. I, I can do this or that. You'll draw back because God wants you to rely totally on him. You see, this word hasak, it can actually be a bad thing because when it talks about the Pharaoh, and how his heart hardened against God, it's the same word. It's hasak. Pharaoh hasaked his heart against God. And any time you rely on your own strength, any time you're putting yourself before God, you run the risk of taking a heart that could be given to God and drawing away and getting hard and getting rebellious, and you hasak it for yourself. And you turn away from God. And that's when bitterness enters. That's when bitterness enters into a heart and turns our heart stubborn, turns us away from God. Did you know there's a curse upon you when you strengthen yourself away from God? Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought. For it does not cease to bear fruit. And then he says that famous verse that we all know. The heart is deceitful among all things. Desperately sick. Who can understand it? You have the power in your heart to be strong towards God or to be strong away from God. To let his said, his mishpat, and his sedekah grow in your life, making you a disciple, developing you as a disciple, or you draw away and you become strong in your own strength. But the Bible is clear. There is a curse on that. And you'll be like a compromised David living in a wilderness, 
living a compromised life with no fruit. The alternative is to draw, is to take these zigzag moments and instead of hardening our heart, softening our life and saying, God, would you work these in my life? Would you produce your righteousness in my life, your justice in my life, that I might be a tree that has fruit to give out. And when things get hot, when things get heated, I won't wither because I am based upon you and your word. 